Hi guys, hope everyone's well and welcome back to the Improvement Podcast. So if you are listening to this today or uh, when it or when it gets released, sorry, uh, I'll currently be on holiday so I filmed this beforehand. Uh, so yeah, I'm currently going on holiday in a day and a bit which is really exciting so I'm going to Tenerife for a week so I'm really looking forward to that. But uh, jumping into the episode, I'm going to talk about high intensity techniques and where they could be used and the benefit of them and I'll go through different high intensity techniques I like to use during my programming for myself or my clients and why I see value in them and for what exercises I see value for them in. But first of all, high intensity techniques are simply a way to get more work done in a shorter period. They don't do anything magical, they don't confuse a muscle or anything like that. It just basically for the most part allows you to get more effective reps in a shorter period of time and effective reps are simply the reps that are close to failure because they're the ones that build muscle they're the ones that change your physique because if like let's say every time you trained in the gym you stopped five reps from failure you probably wouldn't make much progress and build much muscle so yeah the effective reps are just the ones close to failure so it just allows you to hit failure again without having to rest for a long time, do a set again, just to hit failure again. So it allows you to get more done in a shorter period. And the reason why we want to get more done in a shorter period is because not everyone wants to spend three hours in the gym. And as well as that, even the folk who are fine spending that long in the gym, you could argue it's not that great because your focus can slip when it gets that far into a session. You can also let your effort slip when you're really far into a session the quality of the session as a whole, as a whole, sorry, therefore slip. So it's good to keep it not, I want to, not on the shorter side, but not drag it out super long so those things don't happen. And also, they're just enjoyable sometimes. Like it, it's fun having drop sets on your arms, uh, arm movements, things like that. Like it's a bit boring if you're just doing straight sets, like normal sets one after the other. So yeah, it can add a bit of excitement into your training depending on if you enjoy them or not. Uh, But I think there's a lot of benefit in doing so. So some examples of uh, some high intensity techniques are things like supersets, drop sets, rest pause sets and partials. So if you're a bit confused by what they mean, don't worry, I'm going to go through each and the reason I've selected those high intensity techniques is it's the ones that I feel have the most benefit to them the ones I feel have the most merit to them so that's why I'm going over those certain techniques and not just uh, just random ones so jumping into it I'm going to touch on supersets first so a superset is when you're simply doing one exercise straight to the other so instead of doing we'll take arms for example instead of doing like a bicep curl with a rope and then a tricep extension with the rope instead of doing three sets resting in between each one then doing three sets of triceps you just simply alternate between bicep and tricep so you'll do one set doing a bicep exercise one set doing a tricep exercise and simply repeat that process and the the theory behind that the rationale behind that is because when you're training muscle groups like your arms you don't need to Like it's not that cardiovascular demanding, you don't feel wrecked after training your biceps, so it's not going to take away from how effective your training is, but it will let you get your training done in a shorter period of time. And usually I like to use this for smaller muscle groups, like your arms, like I said, because let's say we went and tried to superset a squat with a hamstring curl. We'll be exhausted from the squat, so the hamstring curl would suffer, or we'd be tired from the hamstring curl, so the squat would suffer you're going to have detrimental effects to how effective each exercise is because it's going to be absolutely brutal trying to superset them. Whereas arms, it's a bit different. Yes, obviously you should have the same focus, the same effort, but it's just not the same doing a barbell back squat or doing a bicep curl. The bicep curl is far or much less taxing. So that's where I see the benefit of it instead of like bigger movements. And like I said, it's good to use on like antagonist muscle groups, which means like opposites, so like biceps and triceps, or you can maybe do it like a, like you can maybe do like a lateral raise into maybe like a bicep exercise if you really want to save time and you want to get your isolation work done quicker. 
but usually I use it on arm work, uh, like if you're using the cables. It's quite great if you're doing like an upper body session because they can be quite long and then tag that on it means you can be in and out faster because like I said, for just adherence purposes, for sticking to the plan, not everyone will want to spend ages in the gym. So yeah, so, so to summarise with supersets is basically to get more work done in a shorter period of time without sacrificing the quality of the work. It's best to use on smaller muscle groups like your arms and the reason being is you don't need to rest long in between those sets. So yeah, don't want to use them on like, exercises that are cardiovascular demanding because if you use it on like a squat going into like, let's say, a leg press, you're going to be out of breath from that squat so your lungs will give out before your muscles, which we don't want unless you want to train your cardiovascular system. But if you're listening to this, you may want to <laughs> improve that. But I usually touch on how to build muscle and lose body fat. So that's not so you're probably not listening to it if you want to just improve your general fitness. As for the next one I'm going to go over, it is drop sets. So drop sets is when you drop the weight you're doing after a set. So it would basically look like we'll take... We'll take a bicep curl because it's an easy example. Let's say you're doing 15 kilos for like bicep curls. You'll then do that set to failure or well, on my set side program to failure for the most part. Uh, so when I'm talking about training unless I say otherwise, it's usually meaning I'm training to failure, which means as much reps as possible with good and safe form. So yeah, drop sets are when you do a set to failure, then you drop the weight and you do another set. So it would look like maybe doing bicep curls with 15 kilogram, you'll reach failure with that, and then you'll do 10 kilograms and reach failure with that. And as I was saying, like these high intensity techniques are just to get more effective reps. So this allows you to get more effective reps by just reaching failure again without having to rest long and do the set again and just get more effective reps in as a result of that. And you can also argue that it gets more blood flow into the muscle. So having that drop set, it means your muscle's going to continue to be challenged. There'll be more blood driven into that muscle. Your muscle will be deoxygenated, which means it will lack that oxygen uh, that's needed to lift the more weight, which means it will apply like a stress on it, which is called metabolic stress. So without complicating it too much, getting that blood, getting that pump to the muscle can cause muscle growth. It triggers actions that cause muscle growth. So that's the benefit of drop sets. So getting that extra blood to the muscle while getting more effective reps. And you can use this again on small and big muscle groups. Usually it will be smaller muscle groups you should use it on, ones that can take a beating. And what I mean by take a beating is like ones that can handle a lot of volume. So things like arms and your delts. Uh, delts being your shoulders. And yeah, delts is just another word for shoulders for those confused. And... The reason why is because one, just like sticking to the plan point of view, it's like not a lot, like let's say I get someone signed up and they've never trained consistently. If I'm getting them to drop set a leg press until failure and drop set it again, they're probably going to be in absolute bits after that leg session for one. Two, probably find it hard to stick to because that is brutal for anyone to do. So I just don't think it's got as much value on those bigger movements for most people and yeah so I prefer usually doing it on things like arms and delts like I said I'm currently doing like dumbbell lateral raises I did two double drop set or a double drop set meaning two drop sets after my main set and that's absolutely brutal so if anyone wants to build their shoulders up build the side delts up so the side of your shoulders and give them a try because uh, they're definitely a good exercise to do and like I said I, f I feel like things like your arms, your delts, sometimes your calves, depending on who you are, can handle a lot more work than, let's say, your, your quads or your hamstrings. So, utilise those high-intensity techniques on those body parts that can handle a bit more of a beating. And you're also not going to have much negative effects of doing it. It's like, if you do a like double drop set on your legs, you're going to feel absolutely crushed. Just, and not, not your legs, but like like central nervous system fatigue, which means just tiredness in general. So your performance will drop on your other exercises. But let's say you start with a double drop set on dumbbell lateral raises. You can still do your main compound movements and don't think they're going to suffer an absolute ton. Uh, there might be very, very, very slight changes to your performance, but 
like I think that value of having that drop set in there and train and training your side delts first is going to have more benefit than missing that out to get an extra rep on a bench press. Uh, so, in terms of like what other exercise you should do it on, usually, like I said, isolation exercise in a safe, fixed environment because when you let's say you try to do it on things like a like a barbell back squat, you're you might get a bit of form breakdown, you'll get really tired fitness wise, you might lose focus because you're doing that set for such long periods of time. So it's probably not idea doing it in that unsafe environment with like a free weight barbell. And a fixed environment you can isolate that muscle, not worry about form breakdown and just just go for it. Just just like uh, like a leg extension, I know I said I prefer like smaller movements for them, but like a leg extension you're not going to injure yourself really unless you do something very, very wrong on a leg extension. But for the most part, you can just close your eyes and straighten your legs until they can't move and get to work. Whereas, like a barbell back squat, there's more risk of injury. So yeah. Next up is a rest pause set. So a rest pause set is doing a set to failure and then rest in 20 seconds, doing the set to failure again. Rest in 20 seconds and doing the set to failure again. And all three of these sets, you basically keep the weight the same. So let's say you're doing, we'll take like the doctor machine, for example, the one where you close your legs uh, and a, ma a machine I really like doing the rest pauses on. If you're my client, you'll probably have it programmed. And uh, if not, it's probably for a reason. So don't complain ab about me not having it in your program <laughs> and having a rubbish program. So yeah, the rest pause set, Again, it's just to get more effective reps. And for example, if you if you do it and keep the weight the same, you're training to failure each set. I usually get something like, oh, today I just trained legs and quite exhausted now. But enough, yeah, we'll, we'll not talk about that. But during my leg session, I'd done 13 reps on the doctor, then I'd done, I think, uh, four, and then I'd done two. So as a result... You could argue on my first set, since the five effective reps from failure are the ones that are most beneficial, I got five reps, five effective reps in my first set, I got four effective reps in my second set, and then I got two effective reps in my third set. So if I add that up, that's five, four, uh, yeah, 11 in total. So if you think about how much effective reps you get in two sets if you're trained to failure, so if you get all five reps close to failure, that would be 10. So in theory, a rest pause, just doing one set and resting 20 seconds between the three with the same weight. If I get 11 effective reps, I'm getting the same benefit of doing two separate sets with taking much less time to do so. So again, that's just the benefit of it getting more work done in less period of time. And again, I generally do these on safer movements where you're in a fixed environment, ones that aren't very demanding on your cardiovascular system or your your lungs basically so yeah things like adductors side delts uh, maybe like a like a chest fly if you've got a weak chest good good place to uh, add it in or maybe even like a lat pull down if your lats are lacking you can do that at start of another session just to get some work done really fast and not have a really long session calves even abs it can be done on so these are yeah i'll I'll mostly use a rest pause instead of like a drop set super set because they will probably like just for for just most movements I think a rest pause is a bit better of a high intensity technique to use just because you're keeping that loading up. And next up, I'm going to talk about partial reps. So partial reps are basically half reps. So these can be very beneficial I think in some circumstances. And so things like arm training I use partial reps on so if I'm doing like a dumbbell hammer curl once I can't get any more full reps I'll just basically move the dumbbell do like as much small movements as I can until I can't move that weight anymore and same with lateral raises I'll I'll just basically move those dumbbells drive them out even if I'm not getting full reps because although you can't do like a full rep I'm demonstrating it if you're watching on YouTube. If you can't get up this far, if you're doing a half rep still, you're still going to be using the side of your shoulder, your side delt. So why stop? Why stop if you've got more in the tank? So it, it just lets you completely exhaust that muscle group. And 
especially on movements where they're like they're really hard at one bit, like a lateral raise. It's really hard at the top, and really easy at the bottom when you've got more, it's more energy, more to do at a certain range of motion. That's where I'll usually use it. So, yeah, and same again, like arm training, la- uh, your side delts they can take a beating. So I'll use partials on it. Whereas, let's say you're doing like a leg press, <laughs> you probably don't want to do partial reps because you'll just feel absolutely ruined after it and it'll just take away from the rest of your training as a result of it, from that fatigue, the tiredness you'll experience from that exercise, unless it's at the very end of your session. But again, I don't see why you would use partial reps on the leg press. But again, smaller, smaller muscle groups, maybe even calves, you can use it on abs maybe if you can't do like a full sit-up or a full leg raise. Just those movements where you can still get a wee bit out of your muscle at a certain range. Or maybe a leg extension or a hamstring curl. Just so you're getting that extra bit out of your muscle instead of doing another set. Just so you're completely exhausting it. And uh, yeah, so it just makes it makes up for exercises like the side lateral raise where it's easy at the bottom. It just makes up for that and makes it on a, on paper a better exercise or a more effective exercise because if you did just stop a dumbbell lateral raise when you can't get to the top you're under training your shoulder so much because you can still get so much at the bottom it's like that's not you reached true failure throughout all the range of motion if that makes sense it's only you reach true failure at the top which happens really really fast compared to the bottom so yeah i hope you enjoyed those uh, high intensity techniques so i'm just going to cover them all quickly in case you forgot uh get your notes out so supersets it's just when you do one exercise straight into the other usually use that on arm work things like that uh, drop sets is when you drop the weight and do another set so it could look like doing a dumbbell lateral or i'll take a bicep curl because that's what i said last time doing like hammer curls with 15 kilograms dropping that weight once you can't get any more reps and doing it again with 10 kilograms to get more effective reps in and more blood flow into your muscle. A rest pause, it just basically allows you to get more effective reps, keep the weight high, the loading high, and basically get about two sets worth of work done in one when you think about how much effective reps you're getting. So yeah, it's basically doing the set, rest in 20 seconds, doing the set again, rest in 20 seconds, then doing the set again. And you keep the weight the same, like I said. Partials are just basically half reps, are, which is good when you can't get any more full reps, but you've still got some energy, some oomph at a certain range of motion, like the bottom of a lateral raise. So, some good rules to stick by for the most part. Uh, you might have a few exemptions from this, but it's usually better on single joint movements because injury risk is usually lower. You can usually stick to it because I'm not going to program like a... Like a drop set on squats because it's going to be extremely difficult hard to stick to unless you enjoy that pain of tra- training legs and go for it and also fatigue so let's say like you do like your first compound movement and you do like a drop set and then let's say you do a rest pause set as well in your second set you are completely ruining your performance on the other two compound movements let's say you've got three on your leg day so you're just completely prone yourself in the bucket you're getting so much less out of those other movements so usually it's good to not do a ton of those compound movements at the start and do it on smaller muscle groups where you're you're not fatigued uh, and as well as that be smart we use each so like i said don't do partials <laughs> on a barbell back squat because you will probably hurt yourself and don't prob it's probably not a good idea to do like drop sets during deadlifts because you will probably hurt your head <laughs> like I, like uh, my mate's done in the past actually it's, that's a funny memory uh, we were doing deadlifts and he had football so he basically I was like right we'll just drop set it so he done like I said like 120 100 then 80 and then 60 and he, he hurt his head big time uh, but yeah we all make those f- silly mistakes and only do them when you can't recover when you can recover from them, sorry, which means if you're in a dieting phase, you're currently got less ability to recover, you don't have as much energy, you don't you don't have that ability to grow muscle as well, so you don't need to be doing drop sets, supersets, rest pause sets, or maybe supersets, that's like a bit different, because you're not actually doing more work, you're just condensing that work. 
but you don't need to be doing rest pause sets and pot and like drop sets if you can't grow that muscle effectively at that period and if it's just going to take away from your performance throughout the other movements you could argue you don't need to but again on the muscle groups like your side your shoulders your arms if you can recover from them then you might as well give it hell and do it uh things like drop sets super sets so yeah, it just depends on what movement it is and what phase you're in like and a good way to tell if you're doing too much is are you still sore going into the next session if so then you're doing a wee bit too much maybe and uh think about when are you next training that body part onto that topic so if let's say you're doing legs once a week you can get away with throwing in a lot of these high intensity techniques whereas if you're doing it three days later you probably can't you'll need to do less sets and less high intensity techniques as a whole uh, so yeah hope you found this insightful and helpful drop me a message and let me know if you did and if you want to see any topics similar to this please leave me a rating and review that would be greatly appreciated subscribe follow share uh, whatever support you can give me would be amazing we're coming up on 600 downloads and i can't thank yous enough for your support so far let's get to a thousand i'm sure we can in no time and again uh, any topics you want me to cover i'll be more than happy to do so so please drop me a message and let me know thank you guys as always and hope everyone has a great week